Hey everyone, welcome to week 23, day five. This is our last day of our Taming the Beast uh, week. And I really feel that today I'm more confident in the way I see, I perceive this object. You know, it started out as a very menacing, kind of tangled mess of an object. And slowly but surely, it's become a kind of, yeah, a tangled mess, but a friendly tangled mess. And I'm really happy that I have been able to establish a relationship just by observing it and taking time to paint it. So I especially liked yesterday's painting, that it was very loose, very, very abstract. I just picked a couple of moments of the painting to highlight. And I felt that there's an essence of that light post in there. I don't have to describe to overly describe it. I was very happy. So let's see how we finish off this week. And remember next week, new theme. We're gonna be here even though it's gonna be our anniversary. We've been together for four years. Woo -woo. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna work through it. I was gonna tell Danny we should take a break, but no, we're gonna work through it. So we're gonna celebrate by working. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys for hanging out. Bye. Okay, let's get started. Now today is gonna to be the last day on our The Beast week. And I think I'm incredibly grateful for granting myself the chance to be able to explore this subject matter for the whole of the week. I really think that this is different than if I had decided to just do a single painting, trying to encompass like the totality, the wholeness of this, you know, electrical post with all these power lines running through it in just a single painting. That's something that a lot of people ask me about because I really did kind of make a very strong transition from making paintings that were larger in scale and they were images where I worked normally for, you know, over a month in each painting, which I guess is a traditional amount of time. I know there's people that take, you know, six months to do a whole painting. There's people that take a whole year to do a painting. But for me, a large painting could go anywhere from a month to a month and a half. And that's what I was kind of accustomed to. It was hard for me. It was very, very hard for me to think of an Alla Prima one session painting to equate it with the paintings that I had worked on for several weeks. Uh, there is this natural impulse to think that paintings that take longer are more committed efforts. And I totally understand that, but I think that there's something very strange that I've noticed about the wholeness of the project. Not just the fact that it is about painting every single day, but when I look back and I see the totality of the paintings we've accumulated with this project, I think that that actually makes up a whole. So let's say I would have painted a single painting for six months. I actually see this project these last six months as almost a single image. In my brain, I can't really divorce or distill single images from the project. I obviously think that some are closer to my sensibility than others, but that doesn't mean that I feel that they are more important, that one is more important than another. I actually see them as this very kind of homogenous mass that I always try to verbalize and encapsulate as a painting act. I always try to refer to what I do in painting nowadays, not actually as an effort that solidifies as a painting that ends up existing as an object, but as a painting act. And a painting act doesn't really finish in anything. It doesn't have to be validated by a physical object. You can actually put all your effort into just solely this action that takes anywhere from two hours to five hours, and it's gonna be valuable regardless of the time that you've put into it. In that sense, I do understand that I've made a transition from, yes, paintings that were many times indirect paintings that I solved in three or four layers of paint versus the paintings that I'm doing now, which are very, very direct, finite paintings that I have to solve, you know, as a challenge, I have to solve in a single sitting. I have to see if I understand my ideas clearly enough that I can actually put them down in paint and that then the paint can actually answer back. And I'm saying this because yesterday's painting was kind of a shift for me, really. It actually made me assume a role of painter that I very rarely assume. I always feel that 
regardless of if these paintings take a shorter amount of time than the paintings I would traditionally do, I always find a way to try to develop a painting or an area of the painting in some way where I think my brain, my very traditional painting brain that has been educated with a very naturalist, realist impulse can say, yeah, this is done, this is finished, and this kind of ticks the requirements that would signify one of those naturalist realist paintings. But yesterday, I really felt that I had to push towards something that has always been one of my favorite parts about painting, which is simplification, which is synthesis. And I noticed that with myself, you know, in this kind of inner argument that I have while I'm painting, I don't let myself reach those moments where I explain things in very broad terms of painting or where I neglect the uh, development of a painting, not because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it, but because I feel that that initial effort, those initial marks can have the same amount of power and strength as the ones that are eventually speaking about very specific moments of form. That is something that I've always, always been attracted to, but I just don't let myself go to those places. I always try to tell myself there's an expectation of what your painting should look like, and there's been this strange validation throughout the years where people that have seen your work or bought your work or exhibited your work, they drive that into your brain and tell you, hey, this is what we expect your painting to be. This is what we want to see. This is what we've celebrate throughout the years. So don't just change that. Just make that even more sophisticated and make more of that and make it even more, you know, virtuoso. And I actually know that path and I know how that path feels and I know the pressure that that path sort of instills in you. And it's totally fine if you're not answering to anyone but yourself. And if you just want to get quote unquote, better and better and better or more refined at doing what each one of us does naturally, that's totally, totally fine because then you're not feeling the power that these outside forces are exerting onto you. I've noticed that we many times, even if we want to defend our inner voice, we sometimes cannot defend ourselves against all that expectation and all that weight that all these powerful institutions bring down on us. And we end up making compromises between what we want to do and what is expected of us. And that's a very sad moment when you're working because I understand that painting and art has to be seen as a job, as a very practical job that has to cover your everyday necessities and your obligations. But if there's anything that art shouldn't be is disloyal to your intent and to your drive and to your very, very specific voice. So when I was painting yesterday, I had all this quarreling like inside of me where my instinct would tell me, yes, I have to push to try and develop this post. And developing this post means that I have to model it and I have to be very, very keen in observing the little details and the specifics. And I have to try and balance the tiny little specifics against the wholeness of this light post and these power lines. And that is what I know how to do. That is what I've been doing for many, many years. Those actions encompass the way I was taught how to paint, the painting I was taught to respect, and ultimately the painting that I kind of know how to do and that I've presented to people throughout these past 20 years. So doing these daily exercises and almost like the whole of this project just goes against a lot of the things that I've been taught. And it's not just about saying, yeah, just do a single painting. What's the problem with that? Just do an alla prima painting and that's it. But what I didn't realize when I started doing this is that that was going to be the vast majority of the work that I was going to produce. So there's no kind of balance here. I've actually put like a ton of energy into trying to understand my painting in those terms, into trying to migrate the idea that I had of painting as an object into painting as an action. And I think it's very, very difficult. That translation and that transition is not as simple as I thought it was going to be. And I've realized how kind of deeply embedded and ingrained those ideas of highly traditional painting are in me and have been in me for many, many years. So I think that yesterday's painting was just a way to tell myself, 
hey, if you want to find possibilities during this project, you have to let yourself see some of these pain things as opportunities to explore those areas of painting, those definitions of painting that I haven't really granted myself a chance to do. And I think yesterday was just about saying, I've blocked this in. I have a very, very open sense of what this view means to me. This very abstract sense, this very almost quiet sense. I was almost able to silence all the noise that I was referring to in the first couple of days because I saw it as a very plain kind of homogenous thing. And suddenly I was like, wow, that's kind of what I want to paint. I don't really need to push that, push that further because it already is there in a very simple enunciation. So why can't I leave it like that? And that's when your brain starts telling you, well, because people are expecting a more finished painting or because you're going to have to try and sell this painting and it should look a certain way if you want to sell it. So it was very cool that the painting actually served two purposes. And I think that it almost silenced the noise that I was seeing, the visual kind of cacophony that I was seeing outside the window. But it also served to silence the other voices that are in my head that are trying to remind me of what a traditional painting should look like or a painting that's going to be commercialized should look like or what the expectation people have within my work is. And it was really, really nice to just tell myself, I can silence those voices too and just work on what I think is best for this exercise and best for this project, best for myself, and honestly, best for the painting also, because I have to let myself see these paintings as excuses to try and investigate all these paths that I've never really traversed. I was very, very happy. And I think that because I did that painting yesterday, and this is one of the coolest things about doing a painting day after day after day after day is that one painting opens the door that another painting can then further explore. And it doesn't mean that you have to do the same formal act of painting. You don't have to follow that painting as if it was an instruction manual. You just have to understand what it taught you and then put that to use, which is very hard. That's easier said than done. But I think today's painting was kind of that, was just assuming, hell yeah, I can totally see this drive, this transition that people like Diebenkorn or Dickinson had from the respect and the honoring of the observation of nature, but then translating it and taking all that energy and all that stimulus into a more abstract arena, and then just concentrating on form, on rhythm, on shapes, composition. And I love that that happened yesterday. And that's the idea that I wanted to strengthen today. Because in today's painting, I just immediately saw the power lines and said, I have to do that. I haven't really uh, delved into the rhythm that is created by these power lines, which is you know, very, very close to just something that could be resolved with drawing. But again, I don't want to equate line with drawing. I know that there's a ton of inherent energy in those marks in nature that can be translated and emphasized through drawing that would make it very, very powerful. But I wanted to see what would happen throughout this week through paint. So I was like, okay, I'm going to really, really try to understand it through painting. And my mind immediately, yes, went to Diebenkorn because I think that that spirit of Diebenkorn has, you know, empowered me throughout the week and has never left, but also Cy Twomley. And Cy Twomley, I think he is one of the most fascinating uh, draftsmen, yes, in the 20th century, in the latter half of the 20th century, but also in all of history. I think that what he did for drawing is something that pushed drawing forward in directions that nobody expected. And it's just a very, again, a wholesome sense of drawing. It's drawing that could invade a painting and that could turn a painting into a sculpture. And one of the series that has always fascinated me from Twomley is the uh, treatise work. And the treatise work is actually based on this avant-garde musical composition that's called The Veil of Orpheus by Pierre Henry. And Twomley is trying to translate all of this stimulus into just visual phenomena. And honestly, when I heard The Veil of Orpheus, I thought it was a little too strident and a little too shrill. And I think Twomley is just far more balanced. But that was Twomley. He was trying to extract all this information and just interpret it in very, very simple, clean terms. 
I think that that was in my mind, and I realized how very tough it is to take something that is chaotic in its nature and then try to see it in very, very simple terms. Twomley did it in his chalkboard paintings, which is something that he was very famous for, that he kind of started in the 50s, and then he sort of reclaimed it back in the late 60s and early 70s. And he's a genius at turning something that is naturally sort of equated to drawing and almost transform it into, yes, obviously a painting, but also into this object. So it was very, very cool that my mind is trying to liberate itself from thinking of painting as an object and where I landed and the artist that I respected and that I wanted to, in a way, echo the most today was Twomley, who was trying to marry drawing with painting and sculpture to create this specific object, like Judd would call it. So I'm actually grateful that these two paths intersected. I'm not truly following the road that Twomley had carved out because I feel that I'm heading elsewhere. But it was so nice to just see this little painting as an opportunity to think about how my idea of painting is being resignified and how that redefinition is actually helping me into understanding the way I approach paint in a daily manner and the expectations that I have for those paintings. I think those things are constantly transforming. I don't really feel that I've reached a moment where I understand where this is heading. What I do understand is that it has a very fluid nature and it almost reinvents itself constantly week after week, given that during this project, we've given ourselves the opportunity to work through weekly themes. I found that fascinating from this week that it gave me the chance to do paintings that I'm not used to doing. You know, there is nothing bounding you to the paintings that you used to do. This is just a new exercise, a new moment in your life. You can actually understand it in whichever way you want. I was actually very, very grateful for that. That was it for uh, today's painting, and that was it for this week. I thought it was an awesome week. I mean, I, I was grateful for the chance that I gave myself when we did the Fears Week to try and deal with those in daily paintings. But this was actually very, very interesting, and it felt very different from that week just by telling myself, okay, now you have a week to try and engage in a conversation with this object that uh, was the source of, of your panic and fears and anxiety. So it was a very, very cool, cool week. I think that some ideas that I've had during this week are going to be put to use in next week. I've noticed how strong of a fundamental cornerstone of painting composition is. So I think I'm going to study composition a bit uh, next week. That's going to be next week. That's going to be a whole new theme for next week. So hopefully you guys can accompany us. And as we always say on Friday, Danny and I are super grateful for your company, for letting us be your company during the week. And we hope to see you next week. So thank you. Bye.